On this quick bite video, we will get you started on using the attribute wrangle node. What is the attribute wrangle node? Well, the attribute wrangle node allows you to manipulate geometry attributes using the high performance VEX scripting language. In short, it just makes the operations go fast, similar to VOPs. They let you run some operations over discrete geometry elements, such as points, primitives, details, vertices. As a caveat, this is not a lesson on VEX or coding, but really meant to just cover the most salient aspects of VEX to get you started on basic attribute wrangling with no fear. To begin, let's talk about accessing common attributes using the at symbol. We can access the position using at p as a syntax. Now, if we wanted to access the y component of position, we can put a period followed by y and set that equals, say, 1.0. And your statement with a semicolon, and you should see that my spheres have now moved up the y position by one unit. Now, statements ending with a semicolon is just something that you need to get used to. Kind of think of it like a full stop behind a sentence. If you wanted to set x, y, and z coordinates at once, you may instead use a curly brace. So at p equals to open curly brace, 0, 1, 2, semicolon. And now you would see that it seems that I only have one sphere left. Well, the reality is that this illustrates I still have 100 points. And so I am actually copying 100 spheres. However, this operation operates on every single point. And I have now asked for every single point to be moved to the exact same location. So it looks as if I just have one sphere. Now, if I wanted to create an attribute such as P scale that doesn't currently exist, I can create that using the at syntax as well by using at pscale. For those of you who know, pscale is an attribute that carries special meaning to the copy to points node. Using pscale, you are able to vary the scale of the spheres that are being instanced. For some special attributes such as pscale and p for position, we don't need to explicitly tell Houdini what type of attributes these are. However, in this situation, I like to be a little bit more explicit and I'm going to say that it is specifically a float attribute. Assign it to maybe 0.5. And now you can see I have spheres that are half that size. We can also now observe that our p-scale attribute has been created in our geometry spreadsheet. Similarly, if you are creating a custom attribute or an attribute that Houdini does not know about, you'll want to be explicit and state the attribute type. For details on the different attribute types, check out the using expressions link in the blog post. Besides creating attributes, we can also create interim variables that do not get passed on as attributes. And it's really quite as simple as removing the at sign. And as you can see, it no longer exports that attribute to the geometry. Let's put our pscale attribute back in and have a little fun with vex functions. Let's randomize the pscale using the random function. We can specify at pscale equals to random and we can give it the position we can see now that it randomizes our p scale based on the position and random returns a value from 0 to 1. You may also use the attribute ptnum, which stands for point number, to seed your random function instead. Now, ptnum corresponds to the geometry spreadsheet's numbers over here. Alternatively, if this is a particle simulation, you can use the unique attribute ID instead. Something we use very often to art direct 
our simulations is to create a channel ramp. So let's do that by using the channel ramp function and specify the name of the ramp. So let's call it size ramp, followed by what we would use to sample the ramp, which we will use the result of our random function, which goes from zero to one to sample the ramp. In order to create the ramp parameter here, all you need to do is click on create spare parameters for each unique call of CH. Click on this and you get the size ramp nicely created. For you. To explain the channel ramp really quickly, when random returns a value close to zero, it will sample a point right over here. If it is zero, it will return a value of zero. And if random returns a value that is close to one, then right over here, it will sample this point near the ramp that returns a value close to one. Because we are randomly sampling along this ramp, if we wanted to have more smaller spheres, and less bigger ones. We can always shape this ramp. We can also require a minimum size that is maybe 10% by going to position zero and keying in a value of 0.1. We have spheres that are minimally 0.1. If we wanted to scale all of our spheres up or down by a certain amount all the time, at p scale equals to at p scale multiplied by some amount, and we'll introduce the channel parameter. Using the channel function, we can specify a parameter called scale. And with the semicolon, once again, create spare parameters. And now you can see a scale parameter has been created. By default, the scale parameter is set at zero, which is why our spheres disappear. So let's set it back at one, and you can sphere our spheres are back. If we set it at 0.5, we can see the multiplying effect it has on our existing P scale. By adding, making it 1.5, you can see it has made it 50% bigger. Also, we are able to replace at P scale equals to P scale multiplied by channel scale with simply using this statement called multiply equals, and that is basically the same 